Hey everybody and welcome to our brand new study in the book of Judges. If this is your first time with us, know that we have chapter studies for the entire Bible up to this point. So Genesis through the book of Joshua. And now we're talking about the book of Judges. So uh, if, if you don't know, we have an outline, which I'll throw up on the screen here, I have an outline uh, PDF every day with our study that contains all the information that we go over. So if you want to review it or use it when you're studying with somebody else, it's out there for free as a, a digital download on our website. And there's a link down in the description. Also, eventually there will be physical books available with all the outlines in them if you prefer to you know, have a, a physical, tangible thing to study out of, which I typically do. Uh, I'm finishing up the editing on Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Bible right now, and my great mother has been helping me, so thank you, Mom, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Each study is supposed to be about five minutes. Typically, we stick to around that time. The first study of a book, though, is always longer because we have all this introduction information. We're going to have some of that in, in this, uh, this chapter as well. So let's talk about Judges chapter 1. First, let's talk about a new section that I've added to the outline. So you'll see at the top, uh, well, on these outlines, we always answer the important questions of like who, what, when, where, and why, and then an application from the chapter. But I've added this new section, Judges featured in this chapter to all of our Judges studies. So the book of Judges, just to give you a little bit of a, a, a preview, it centers around 15 characters known as the judges who they all have some kind of different impact on the nation of Israel, right? And, and God uses these people, some of them better than others, some of them more godly than others. God uses them to work out his will in the nation of Israel uh, and to, well, yeah, we'll just say that, to, to guide the nation of Israel and the nations around them in accordance to his will. So the judges really will begin, we'll, we'll begin talking about them in basically chapter three. And I feel like that's kind of the meat of the book. The first two chapters, in my opinion, are kind of the setup for the book. They're the linking chapters of uh, what, what came and what finished in the book of Joshua and the events there, and now linking it into this period of the judges, which we'll talk about is going to span several hundred years. So in chapter 1 and chapter 2, we're kind of finishing up the conquest of the Canaan land. We're also going to talk about a problem that arose because the conquest wasn't done really the way that God wanted it to be done. The Israelites didn't follow through on it, and we'll talk about that in our, in our outline section. So just know that this is a continuation of the story that we, that we left off in the book of Joshua. So if you're not familiar with the first five books of the Bible, or wait, no, that would be the first six. First six books of the Bible and the story that's contained in them, the story that we've been following all this time, it might be helpful to go back and review that a little bit so that you know where we are in history and, and you're not like jumping into the middle of a story, right? But if that is you, um, maybe maybe I can provide some, some, uh, some information that will <laughs> help you get caught up. So, okay. So in this chapter, we are introduced to one judge, the first judge. And we're not going to talk about him a whole lot. He's really just introduced here. We'll pick it up in verse or in chapter three. That is Othniel. Okay, so he is highlighted here on our our first section. Now, the next section: when when did these events take place in the history of the world and the timeline of the world? Most scholars place the period of the judges between the years 1450 BC and 1000 BC. Now there's some debate as to the exact date. Some people shifting it 50 years this way, 50 years that way, um, or somewhere in between, right? But almost all scholars agree that it falls somewhere between 1450 and 1000 BC. And it, the way that you date the judges really depends on the way that you date the Exodus or like how long it took for the Israelites to conquer the land of Canaan, right? So there's there's complexities with other dates and it's all tied together. And so you'll see, you'll see a bunch of dates out there if you go looking. This five-minute study is not intended to resolve all of those debates, uh, so we'll, I'll just give you kind of the time frame, and I'm going to do my best to date each of the individual judges as best we can from the information in the text and uh, taking, it all, uh, taking a look at it comprehensively. So, okay. We're probably already at five minutes. <laughs> so know this, though, that this book covers several hundred years of Israelite history. 
And I think that's important to point out because in some of the, the previous books, like the, the book of Joshua, especially the, De the book of Deuteronomy, we weren't covering like generations of time. We were covering like at the most like one or two generations. Now we're going to be talking about several hundred years. And within this sh somewhat short 21 chapter book, several hundred years of Israelite history are going to pass. So just keep that in your, in your mind mentally because... Um, well, it just helps to, to, to frame the story of the Bible uh, and piece it all together. It can throw you off that, you know, one book covers basically no time at all, and then the next one's like hundreds of years. So just know that. Okay, now moving on to our next section. Where did these events happen? We've got our handy dandy map, which is much fuller than it was uh, in the book of Joshua. So as I mentioned, chapter one and chapter two kind of link this book back to the story that was being told in the book of Joshua. So Judges chapter 1, the first part of this chapter, describes some of the military victories that the Israelites had in Canaan when they were conquering the land, and Joshua was the one who led that conquest. Specifically, uh, victories that, that are mentioned in this chapter were those won in the lands of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. Now the second part of the chapter records the, the problem that is going to persist for the rest of this book, right? So that's why it's here in chapter one. This is the introduction of the problem that is going to plague the Israelites until the end of the book of Judges and really the end of the Old Testament. <laughs> so this is what it is. The second part of this chapter records the pagan nations which remained in the promised land and lived among the Israelites. And they were not supposed to leave any of those pagan nations living in Israel because God said and Moses said and Joshua said that those people would have a negative influence on the Israelites if they allowed them to stay. Well, guess what? They allowed them to stay. So we'll see what happens moving forward. So now we move down and we talk about the main characters, his, you know, historical characters who are featured in this chapter and who we need to be familiar with. The first is Joshua. Now, at the end of Joshua, chapter uh, uh, 24, Joshua died, right? But he's, he's reintroduced here and in chapter 2 because they are linking the two books together. Joshua was the leader of the Israelites. He led the conquest, which we already mentioned. He, he had been Moses' longtime assistant for years, and he was actually present when the Israelites left Egypt. So he saw the ten plagues, you know, and, and he went through the 40 years wandering in the wilderness and then led the people into Canaan to finally inherit the promised land. The next guy we need to talk about is a guy named Adana Bezak. He was the king of Bezek. And we'll talk about him more in the outline. So he's, <laughs> he's an interesting guy. Caleb is next. Caleb was one of the 12 spies that Moses sent into the land of Canaan to spy out the land. He was one of only two spies who brought back a good report saying that God would give them victory. God would give the Israelites victory over the Canaanites if they went in to conquer the land. Joshua was the other spy who gave a good report, but remember the others were unfaithful and that's why all the people had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years because they didn't believe God would give them the land. Finally, we have Othniel. Othniel is, as we mentioned, going to be our first judge. We're not really there yet, but Josh, or, uh, Othniel was Caleb's younger brother and um, he was his younger brother. He was also his son-in-law. All right, so now for our outline, verses 1 through 26, the first part of this, as I mentioned, talking about the continued conquest of the Promised Land. So kind of wrapping up this story of Israel taking this land from the pagan nations, kind of wrapping it up, not totally. but So after Joshua's death, the tribe of Judah and Simeon made war with the Canaanites and the Perizzites who inhabited the land. And at a place called Bezek, they killed 10,000 enemies and captured the local king, whose name was Adana Bezek, who we mentioned in our character section. They did something interesting to him, and that was that they cut off his big toes and thumbs. Now, they didn't just do this to, you know, for torture, for cruelty necessarily. This was actually done because Adana Bezek, by his own admission, had done this to 70 other kings that he had conquered. So he's kind of getting what he had previously dished out. After conquering Bezek, the Israelites fought at Jerusalem, they fought in the Negev, in the hill country, in Hebron, and in Debir. So Caleb promised that whoever conquered the city of Debir, 
uh, whoever uh, captured that city would be able to marry his daughter named Axa, <laughs> which is quite a name for a girl. But he said, whoever captures Debir, you can have Axa, my daughter, as a wife. Well, guess who conquered it? It was his younger brother, Othniel. So that's how Othniel is both um, Caleb's brother and his son-in-law, because he married, Othniel married his niece. <laughs> uh, Caleb gave Axa some land in, uh, he, he gave her the Negev, which was kind of like southern Canaan, part of southern Canaan, and also the upper and the lower springs. The text informs us that the descendants of Jethro, do you remember who Jethro is? You, you have a good memory if you do. Jethro was the son-in-law, or sorry, he was the father-in-law of Moses. Right, so the descendants of Jethro, we're told, settled with the people of Judah in their territory. So it's kind of a, a fun fact. Other cities captured by the Israelites included Z uh, Zephath, Gaza, Ashkelon, Ekron, and Bethel. And you'll see most of those on the map. So then in the second half of this chapter, we have the problem introduced that's going to plague Israel for centuries to come. And that is that Israel neglected to drive out the idolatrous nations that lived in the promised land. There's a list of, of these, and I'll read it to you. Judah neglected to drive out the inhabitants of the plains. Benjamin failed to drive out the Jebusites in Jerusalem. The tribes of Manasseh, Ephraim, Zebulun, Asher, Naphtali, and Dan are specifically mentioned as having failed to purge their lands of the pagans. And so rather than driving these nations out, the people of Israel were content with living alongside them, right? which was specifically forbidden by Moses. You can see Numbers chapter 33, verse 50 through 56 for that. So whew, that's been a lot of information. Uh, that is Judges chapter 1. And now, as always, we close out our study with an application. So our application for today, there's a verse in the New Testament that encourages Christians not to give up when they get tired in the service of the Lord. It's Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, and it says this, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. The Israelites, it seems, got tired of fighting, and they stopped short of completing the mission that God gave them, and their mistake actually ends up costing their descendants for generations to come. And just a sneak peek on the rest of the Old Testament, it actually ends up costing their descendants the promised land that they just received from God. So the application for us is this. Being a follower of Jesus is, is not always easy, but the very last thing that we want to do is to give up early, to quit early, and fail to obtain our promised land, which is heaven. God is going to help us to persevere. But there will be times when God expects us to push through hardships to complete the tasks that he's given us to do. So that is Judges chapter 1 and our application. That's basically what we do, but in a much more condensed format on a daily basis. Uh, check out the website if you haven't already. Catch up on the story of the Bible if you haven't done the first six books yet. And uh, hopefully I will see you back tomorrow for Judges chapter 2.